Hello and aloha from Honolulu, Hawaii. It is February 23rd, 2008, and this is Thomas Allenberg, recently retired teacher, public school teacher, now living in uh, Waikiki, wanting to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me hope, the first real hope and inspiration, Barack, and all of your people, hope once again that we as, as Americans can take back the American dream and in fact ignite a new American revolution. For as Thomas Jefferson said, we may need a new revolution every seven years if the system becomes stultified and stratified and no longer works. And we all know that for many, many, many people it does not work. I want to thank you for being one of the most courageous leaders in standing up when it was very unpopular against the lies that you sensed intuitively and with your brilliant mind and your heart and your soul and your spirit when you sensed that something was going very wrong in the push to go to war in Iraq. And I salute you. I'm supporting you because of that. I consider you absolutely brilliant and enlightened and awake in a way that I have not seen a politician or any, anyone running for president even come close since the days of the two Kennedys and Martin Luther King that inspired me so much as a young man. I met Martin Luther King in 1963 and he said we have to bring light into the darkness as you have just recently said and JFK I saw him in 63 where he asked us all what we could do for our country to contribute to make America a great country and I see that you can inspire that Barack because you have the ears you have now the trust and the faith you have the excitement building you have people uh, getting up from their lethargy and their hopelessness and despair for the first time in many many years and saying yes yes we can make what's left of the American dream not only come back but resurrect, literally resurrect. We can have a new American revolution and we can bring back ethics and, and, and a spiritual morality to the, to the uh, fabric of our, of our culture. And we can become responsible again simply by just telling the truth and bringing back what I always taught my students, the right that we all have to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness equally based on equal treatment. One thing I discovered as a public school teacher was that we did not ever have freedom in the public school system. Never. It, the closest we ever came to it, I have to turn down my music a minute, hold on. The closest we ever came to freedom was during the Clinton era where we had what was called shared decision making. But that quickly was lost when No Child Left Behind came in and the school system became a brainwashing outreach program for the Matrix. In fact, I was like Neo. I felt like Neo in the Matrix because I woke up and I realized that I had become an Uncle Tom. In fact, I have now written a book about my experience in the school system working as an Uncle Tom called Uncle Tom's Classroom how one public school teacher awakened his students to the cosmic super self within. Now I see your cosmic super self. I can see your spirit. You even talked about uh, questioning whether or not you were a big enough vessel for what wanted to come through you. And what I see wants to come through you is this resurging American dream, this incredible idea that there could be a society on earth in which each and every person was equal under the divine laws of God and that we all could develop our individual potentialities and have lives that meant much more to us on a deep soulful level than being automaton, zombie, workaholic, laboring cogs in some kind of capitalistic merry-go-round gone crazy. Uh, when I was in the Peace Corps I saw it uh, sending bulldozers into the rainforest and cutting down the rainforest looking for oil so there is I, I you say you want to shed light onto um, into the darkness so 
why don't you have these roundtable discussions, kind of like a King Arthur, you know, and gather people together like me, people who have been in the trenches, who know about what's really going on. I know you do that already, and I salute you for that. Um, I've worked all over the place, including some of the harshest and hardest environments in America, like the south side of Chicago and, and the Mission District in San Francisco. And I know how people are hoping and praying that you are going to bring uh, some kind of uh, electromagnetic zap of hope into their lives that they can have a chance for the American dream and not have to live out their lives as Uncle Tom's. You talk about that you felt that your life proved that there was a place for all kids, but you were smart and that's what I want to talk about. In the public school system the way it's set up today, it's only set up for the really smart kids and the really great athletes to make it. The rest of the kids kind of begin to slide down the social stratus and the ac academic stratus from B to C to D to F. There becomes uh, uh, an automatic stratification process. Since the classes in most public schools are so crowded, uh, the only way to really control the, uh, the chaos in most classes was through fear and intimidation. So I am asking you, in fact, I am begging you, if you can broaden and think out of, out of the box, broaden your concept of opposing not only the war uh, in, on Iraq and withdrawing the troops from Iraq, but helping us uh, end the war on our children because there is a war to control their minds and not to let them think. All we have to do is c connect the dots and see, ah, why did we elect leaders who are very uh, ignorant? Well, we elected leaders like that in the past because we were dumbed down as a society. I saw it in the public schools. I saw the way children were discouraged from the time they entered school not to think for themselves, not to question, not to stand out not to be an individual, but to be part of a herd. All the way from childcare now in, Ameri in the American system, children are taught to be lemmings and zombied out followers. They're not encouraged to question. In fact, those who question the most are the ones that get most in trouble. So we're in a system that I call Uncle Tom's Classroom in which we're all being uh, secretly forced to sell out on some basis, and you, Barack, give us hope that maybe we can stop this massive sellout by all of us to these huge systems, these huge organizations that we found out in New York and New Orleans do not have our best interests really at heart. There's so many things we could do, and the things that I did were all free. I opened up my classroom, I taught middle school, all the grades, but I, I focused in on middle school, and once I realized that children were losing their love of life, in fact, do you know they don't even publish the suicide rates of kids anymore because it's so high? Kids are so miserable and so freaked out and so terrorized by everything they have to face in the system. So what I did in my classroom Bergland by the Sea in San Francisco. Thank you very much, San Francisco, for giving me the freedom. I opened it all up, and I allowed the children free speech. I stopped grading them A, B, C, D, and F. I stopped that competition. I taught them that I was going to uh, allow them to choose to design their own projects of bliss, their own semester curriculums. As long as we continued doing all of the strands, literature, history, we began to question the uh, social studies and historical point of view being presented by the military industrial complex. And we found out, yeah, to our surprise, America had in fact manipulated a lot of other governments and had created a lot of enemies in the Middle East and in fact contributed to the hatred that grew up and eventually spawned 911. So please shed some light of truth into. We're big enough now. My children were big enough. We are big enough to accept responsibility for what we have done out of our ignorance. And the way we can really begin is to say free speech in the school system. Allow children and teachers to speak freely once again. Allow them to develop from the bottom up the curriculum that inspires them. Allow them to be truly. 
democratic, and you will be amazed at what happens.